Hey guys, welcome to Adventure Camping again. Uh, this is Tactical Nut. I uh, just had a little time today and I wanted to do a knife review for you. Um, I've been carrying this Michael Hawk Harrier Elite for, I don't know, eight, ten months now. I uh, got it a while back. Really like Michael Hawk. I have a, just a ton of respect for the guy. So I really wanted to support him and buy some of his products. Um, so this is one of the first knives that I got from him. Uh, I think I bought it for 20 bucks when I got it uh, um, from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. But right now, I'm actually looking at the website and they actually have it for 15. Um, all I gotta say is now, go buy it. It's been a fantastic knife for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, but to start off with, let's go over the specs. Um, blade length on this is 3 and 5 8 inches. Uh, width is 7 eighths of an inch. Um, Blade thickness is an eighth of an inch. Uh, overall, well, the closed length is going to be four and three eighths inches and eight inches overall. Um, now the blade still is Aus Eight, which it's a still that I I I really like. Um, I like it because well, for the main reason. Let's just go ahead and be honest with that. It's the best of the budget steels. Um, has great edge retention, durability, hardness, all the kind of stuff that you want out of a knife. The only thing you're not getting, or I would say that the, the main thing you're not getting is edge retention. There's some durability and stuff too with your higher grade steels. Um, but Aus 8, I mean, I don't care what kind of blade you have. You almost can't go wrong with it. It's been outstanding. Um, this has a stone wash finish. Which has been really cool. It's uh, really survived all the tests. I carry it every day. Love it. These right here are Michael Hawk's patented design. The little flippers that come out here. If you notice, this one comes out really, really slow. Um, and that's for a reason. For me personally, um, I like it because if I'm going to be doing any kind of extended task, I like putting this out because I know this is like a good uh, finger guard. It's going to keep my hand from slipping up and cutting myself going down the blade. Um, and I like the fact that they have that on a pocket knife. Um, I've never had a pocket knife. I've never seen pocket knives that have any kind of finger guards. So, way to go Michael Hawk. I love the idea. My only complaint or thing that I would change is this one here. Um, there's no blade up here. There's no risk of hurting myself. Yes, I guess if I had it cinched down in my hand, it would prevent more of my hand from moving forward. Um, but most of the time I just tighten this one down a lot so that it doesn't really move. Um, and I'll put this one up if I know I got a lot of wood cutting and carving that I'm doing. And I've done a, a good amount of carving and cutting with this. Uh, of course your EDC task, opening mail, cutting boxes, all that kind of thing. I do that every day with it. Um, and so obviously I'm not going to use that because it's just opening a letter. It's cutting up in a box, doing whatever. Um, the weight on it's good. I don't know the exact weight. I don't have a scale that can measure this kind of thing. Um, but not real heavy, not very noticeable in pocket. As you see here, the lanyard hole. Um, I don't ever, well, I very rarely put lanyard holes or lanyards on any of my knives. I did on one. The big brother to the Harrier Elite, the Michael Hawk Harrier. I did it definitely not out of necessity. I was just kind of experimenting with uh, tying paracord knots and stuff like that so I thought I would give it a shot on this one. This one um, I'll review in just a little while. That'll be on a separate review. But as you can see when I say the big brother yes it's the big brother. But, focus of this review, Michael Hawk, um, G2 handle scales. I love G10. This has, uh, it's a very light traction. It's not real heavy, but I'll tell you what, I've never had an issue with it slipping or anything like that. I love open pillar construction knives. Um, far easier, like you just don't have to clean, or very rarely, you just wipe out. There is no milling of the liners though as you can see uh, or possibly see liner lock there with some jimping um, but you know like I said when I bought it, it was 20 bucks 
for a $20 knife, I don't expect there to be any skeletonized milling of the linings. Um, but it's not that heavy either, so, you know, not a real concern there. Um, if you want to ask what I would change, I would put some jimping up here. I'm not one to modify knives almost at all, simply because, especially for testing and reviewing purposes, I want to use them as intended. And so if they designed this knife this way, they produced it this way, that's the way they want you to use it. So that's the way I use them. If I've had it for a long time and I feel like I need to change something, I will. But for purposes of testing and reviewing, I'm not going to change a thing. Uh, but in the future, I'll probably put some skateboard tape here to give a little more traction for your, you know, your carving tasks and stuff. Um, another thing I will point out, though, the blade here is the same as his uh, Michael Hawk Hellion Survivor Knife, the 2020 that I have. The same exact blade shape, Tanto Point. I, I mean, I really do like Tanto Points. I know there's a lot of people that don't. I like it because it's a really strong tip design. Um, a little thicker up here. But it's a you know cutting surface here, definitely harder to sharpen uh, because you've got this groove right here, this 17 degree uh, change right there in the blade. But I tell you what, the edge retention on this has been awesome. Out of box, not really nearly as sharp as I wanted. I was able to put a really good edge on it at the time. I'm going to do a demo of the. I'm going to do several knife reviews today, tabletop style, and then I'll do some demos later on but I really just wanted to get these out. Um, but overall, I mean, you know, I really have enjoyed carrying this knife every day. This right here, I mean, out of hand, extremely fast. There is, you know, good solid lockup. For a $20 knife, no blade play side to side, none back and forth. I mean, extremely solid construction. The only thing, or the, the main thing that I would have a problem with is, uh, or that I haven't had an issue with, is these screws right here. Yes, I know they're made to fold out to protect your hands as finger guards, but the problem is, is, is once you put them out, like I had tightened this one down, I actually had a little trouble, or had to put some effort, I won't say trouble, had to put some effort to open this one a few minutes ago, because I haven't done it in a long time. Now... It just flops back and forth with no effort. So these get loose extremely fast. Um, this is actually my second knife of this one right here because when I was on a hike with Baby Glock, on the first one, this screw came out and I lost a handle while we were hiking. So I called uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, which is where I bought it. Um, customer service there is outstanding. And all I asked for was a screw because I was actually able to find the, the handle. But they were like, no, just send us a knife back. We'll take care of the rest. And they sent me a new one, paid for the shipping, all that kind of stuff. Um, so customer service there is awesome, outstanding. But for me, like I, you know, on this kind of knife, there's no saw back. There's no other blade. I don't feel like I need more protection here. Um, so typically I just leave it tightened down. Sometimes you can actually just tighten it by thumb. But, I mean, I've loved this knife. It cuts through, it's done everything I wanted to. Shaved wood, carved, opening boxes, letters, all your, like I said, all your EDC tasks. Um, but one thing you do have to realize when you get this kind of knife, um, or when you get this one particular one, is the only way to carry it is, you know, tip down as a right-hander. It's a, not a very deep pocket clip, as you can see how far it is from the, the tip of it. I don't mind that a whole lot. Most of this is where I go. I don't care about, you know, having this much of a knife showing out of my pocket. Um, I wish it was a little bit uh, deeper, but I wish that about all my knives. I wish all of them were the SOG, really deep carry, where the clip goes over the knife and the whole knife is hidden in your pocket. But, you know, nobody does that, so, or very few. Um... But I tell you what, I mean, this thing, I would not hesitate to have to use this in a self-defense mode. Um, possibly a tactical mode if you were a, you know, military law enforcement and you wanted a pocket knife that you could use to defend yourself. Um, 
wouldn't hesitate. This is a very strong blade, very strong tip. Um, and the blade is long enough, in my opinion, to give you just enough reach to, uh, like I said, defend yourself. Most knives that, I mean, all the knives that I carry, I don't look at as tactical blades, fighting blades, or anything like that. I look at them as EDC blades. But any blade that you have in your pocket, you can defend yourself with. I don't care what the length is. Um, some just do it better than others. But I will tell you what. I have been extremely pleased with this. And for the price, you can't beat it. I mean, even if you had to, I mean, just think about this is in your pocket. You pull it out. And you don't really want to hurt somebody, but you need to deter it. You've got a great possible glass breaking device or self defense device. <coughs> Excuse me there, that's neat. Um, lanyard hole there, like I said. <coughs> I very rarely put lanyards, excuse me again, sorry. Um, but I'll tell you what, uh, obviously it'll fit paracord with no issues. Blade centering here. Kind of hard to see on the camera is pretty excellent. I mean, it's almost dead center. Kind of hard to see, I think, through this camera. Hopefully it'll come out better online. Uh, but, I mean, it's almost dead center. And you can tighten it using the pivot screws if you need to, to adjust the lockup speed. Um, but, quickly, easily to deploy, fast to deploy. Um, but for anyone who's a big outdoorsman like myself, one thing you need to know going into it, uh, which I kind of found out, it's a good 90 de degree spine on this. But that black wash finish, or the stone wash finish that I have on it, that's what you're going to get out of your fire steel. Nothing. And I've driven myself nuts, and I'm probably going to stop, stop or no, start moving away from the coated blades almost simply because of that, yes, it helps with uh, rust corrosion and stuff, but, you know, I mean, if I gotta use my blade to get those sparks off, not that I'm against it or opposed to using the blade, if it's a survival situation and this is the knife that I got, and this is the only way to, to strike my fire starter, well, you know, I'm gonna do it. I'm not one of those that's such a hardcore, oh my god, you're the worst person in the world for using your blade to use a fire, you know, fire steel, I'm going to do it, you know, because hopefully I'm not going to be, you know, surviving for more than a few days, but I would love for the fact that I could use the spine of my knife and not use the blade. I would definitely prefer it, but if I have to, I'm going to, but just so you know, you know, definitely something to take into consideration when you're buying any kind of tool. This one, the spine, not going to strike a fire starter. Um, I may sand this down uh, in just a small area in order to take that coating off so I can use the spine as a uh, fire starting or fire striker, but I mean almost all your ferro rods come with one. You can buy the bare rods, but why when you had the ones that come with the scraper but just so you know love the knife highly recommend getting one i highly recommend supporting michael hawk i have bought multiple items of his um, he does a lot of great work uh, a lot of support of veterans and stuff like that so go out there please buy something of his to keep his company going most of his items are extremely affordable, which is another thing that I love about his products. Um, like I said, this knife right now is going on Smoky Mountain Knife Works for 15 bucks. The Big Brother, when I got it, around the same time I got this one, $25, five inch blade. You can't beat that at all. All state still, just like the younger brother. Um, I mean, what do you do? How do you not, or how do you not get something like that and support a guy that is, you know, sacrifice so much for this country and does so much for people today um, but just want to give you a review on a knife I've been carrying for a while absolutely love I got some new ones in the pockets right now as we speak waiting for a little more time in testing to go to, re to the review table 
Um, got some Kershaws coming up really shortly because I've been carrying those for a while. So stay tuned. A lot more knife reviews. Got some pack reviews coming up. Sorry I've been out of the loop for a while but having some computer issues that uh, hopefully I'll have resolved completely really, really soon. But uh, until then, have fun and always remember, be prepared and have fun.